A racing showcase at the 2013 Seiko 49er and 49er FX Worlds in Marseille, France, which attracted the best skiff sailors in the world, from Olympians to newcomers to the class, all intent on delivering glory round the tracks. The 49er and 49er FX are notoriously frisky to sail and difficult to control. For the spectator, they are totally compelling to watch, moving elegantly in the light winds to epic blasting round the track as the breeze gets up and breakthrough results shake up the leaderboard. Renowned as an innovative class of boat, the new racing formats being tested match the class's reputation, with the knockout and repage qualification stages deciding the top 10 teams will advance to the three race medal finals. The racing format pushes teams to perform well at every stage of the championship, with a three-day qualifier, two-day semi-finals and a one-day final stage. After the three days of qualifiers in which the fleet is split to race in heat, only the top 20 teams advance to gold fleet. The pace steps up with four 20-minute races per day, demanding total focus and little chance to bounce back from mistakes. So the three-day qualifiers are critical, with a top 20 finish the goal to guarantee a place to continue the battle for medals. On the first day, it was all about finding the speed button in the light conditions, with some impressively consistent back-to-back -back wins for the top boats in each of the three 49er groups. Two wins apiece for Denmark's Wara and Lang, Great Britain's Fletcher and Sine, and New Zealand's Hansen and Perebski, who all turned on the power to lead each of their groups. The Danes put in the challenge to several teams on their way to the front, passing Portugal's Lima and Costa after rounding close behind them at the leeward gate and splitting tack right after. A great opening day, but Wara knows that what matters more than bullets is scoreline consistency. Well, we are happy. It's, it's the best start, of course, but uh, it's a long way sailing and that, uh, that's about the consistency. So uh, one uh, first uh, place is good, but uh, we need more and uh, we need to keep being consistent and that's how you win. In the blue group, the Kiwis had their own battles with a young combination of Hansen and Perebski, launching their championship bid in fine form and showing the veterans a thing or two, including Olympic silver medalists and recently crowned 49er European champions Berling and Tuke. Racing in course area C, the red group faced the lightest conditions with many puffs and holes across the course, as teams had to virtually sniff out the wind. The world number six pairing and European silver medalists Fletcher and Sein dominated with a massive lead over the second place team from Germany, Hale and Plosel. The 49er FX were up on the race tracks right after the men racing in course areas A and B. The surprise performance of the day came from Singapore's Kunga and Tan in the yellow fleet, who take the early lead from a 3-2 scoreline, with Denmark's Hansen and Everson putting in a solid performance to follow in second overall from results of second and fourth. Over in the blue fleet, Italy's Conti and Klapsitz delivered the most stable performance with two three-place finishes to end day one in a tidy third overall. As with the earlier racing for the men, getting into the speed groove was key to success, as Hansen explained. It looked like it was okay, we were finished second in the race. Um, so we could see the other girls were going in a high course and we were going a little bit more speed. So we, we think it's quite fine. On to day two of qualifiers and there was a bit more pressure in the breeze, but it was still inconsistent in angle and strength. The left side of the track was the way to go on all race course areas and being amongst the best off the start line was critical today as teams hunted out a clear lane upwind. Um, I mean, it's generally quite tricky conditions, light, and today is very shifty with this island. Um, we've done a lot of hard work since our hoose. We've just done a lot of training with the other Brits. Um, but I think for this weekend, we've, uh, we'll, we'll be ready for it, we're tuned for it, so we'll be out fighting. The discard race factored into the scoring today, which assisted Denmark's Wara and Lang to stay in second on the leaderboard. 
of day one's top three dominant teams, the most consistent performance went to the Kiwis Hansen and Perevsky, who delivered a 3-7-9 to sit in third overall, carrying a tie-break advantage over teammates Burling and Took. Major disappointment on day two in the 49er fleet for those dropping out of the top 40, who are now relegated to continue their racing in the Silver Fleet. The win dropped by the time the 53-team 49er FX fleet took to the track and got even lighter, with two races for the Yellow Fleet and only one race possible for the Blue Fleet. In the Yellow Fleet, overnight series leaders from Singapore, Kung and Tan, put in another showcase performance, crossing the line in fifth place but couldn't put in a follow-up in the next race and shift to second overall. The world number no. 5 ranked team, Jussark and Lorenz from Germany, who won last year's 29er XX Worlds, finished the day's opener in second place but similarly didn't manage to repeat in the next race. The third and last day of the qualification stage would decide the teams to advance to the semi-finals. First up on the racetrack were the girls in the 49er FX, as they aimed to complete the total of five races needed to validate the three-day qualifying series. Up and down scorelines for some, and all change at the top of the leaderboard with Francis Steyert and Bossard counting a third and two first places to charge up to first overall. But it was very close and France's world number 51 ranked pair only carried a tie-break advantage over Germany's Jusak and Lorenz in second, both sitting on 21 points each. So far this year, Denmark's Hansen and Iversen have been overshadowed by the impressive performance of their teammates, Nielsen and Olsen, and it was almost sent to be a similar situation here as double-digit results today spiralled them down the leaderboard. But the pair managed to scrape through to Gold Fleet with a one-point bonus. Looking ahead, the weather was set to change from the light and shifty light breeze to some stiffer wind, which is certainly what the world number one, 49er FX pair of Maloney and Meech were hoping for. When we were training here before the regatta, it was a lot windier than this. Um, so I think we're looking forward to the weekend with a little bit more breeze. Um, I'm going to stretch our legs, I guess. And yeah, I think the conditions will be good. Um, it's a little bit tough, really light, but I think we're just trying to get consistent finishes and just trying to piece together a nice race. So I think we can handle it. We just need to get everything together. Apart from that moment, racing had just started to get interesting at the 2013 Seiko 49er and 49er FX World Championship in Marseille, with the top teams very close in points and everything at stake. The next two days of semi-finals with teams contesting eight 20-minute races, with one discard to throw out their worst result and determine the top nine teams guaranteed to advance the Gold Fleet Finals, leaving the rest 11 teams of the Petite Final to battle for the golden ticket that would advance the top team. In the 49er Gold Fleet, another demanding day of racing, with the unpredictable breeze delivering unpredictable results for the teams as they went head-to-head -head in the intense 20-minute battle around the track. Austria's Bilstein and Husel, one of the youngest teams competing, launched their attack with a strong fourth place before gravitating towards the back of the fleet to finish race two in 16th and closed the day with an 11th and second to move up to third overall on the leaderboard. Great Britain's Fletcher and Sign, the world number six ranked team and European champion silver medalists continued to hold firm in the first overall after a solid day but the gap was narrowing and just two points behind were Denmark's Wara and Lang. The pedigree amongst this fleet is simply the world's best and there is no underestimating the challenge these teams have ahead of them, but consistency is the name of the game. Whilst the breeze across the track was the strongest seen so far here in Marseille, it was very unstable with massive pressure changes and shifts and the last-minute gems of advice from coaches before the race often proved vital to choosing the right tactics and race success. Hansen and Perepski, who showed such stunning form in the opening day, scored a black flag in race two, which has dropped them to 10th overall. A similar fate for the reigning world champions, Outeridge and Jensen from Australia, who added the penalty to their totally double-digit scoreline. 
four races for the 49er FX Gold Fleet with much more intense shifts on their course area. The cavernous holes in the wind up the left side of the track made the upwind choice obvious and the fleet went right. An improvement in form for Denmark's Hansen and Iversen who only just scraped into the gold fleet during qualifications and based on the day's results have clearly turned their form around to move up to 7th overall. Inconsistent score lines for the women as well, with just one team managing to knock out all top 10 results. The world number one pairing of Maloney and Meech from New Zealand, who rocketed to the top of the leaderboard. Leaders going into the day, Steyert and Bossard dropped to second on the leaderboard, with the Italian pair Conti and Klapsitz breathing down their necks, just one point behind in third place. The level of racing in the Gold Fleet is demanding and the 20-minute races require a clear mind and focus to spot your racetrack and sail a clear course out of trouble. Experience counts and it is no surprise to see some of the sailors who have made the transition from other Olympic classes right up at the front, such as 2012 Olympians Steyert and Conti. It's the first words, it's the second uh, regatta for us, uh, it was hard to to manage everything and to, to be good on all race and on all uh, bits. Uh, we did what we have to do today and uh, we tried to, to do our best and uh, it was three full of good races and the last one was quite more difficult. On to the penultimate day of racing and the last day of semi-finals. First to race were the 49er FXs. The world number one Kiwis Maloney and Meech had every intention of keeping hold of their leaders' yellow jerseys but knew the French combo of Steyert and Bassard would be on their tail all the way. Steyert carries the experience of a laser radial world championship gold and both 2012 Olympians, the French team, have what it takes to win despite still being one of the rookie teams. Perfect start line execution ensured they stayed close to the Kiwis who relished the stronger conditions. A win for the French in race 5 helped keep them in second overall. But the day belonged to the Kiwis who continued to count an all top 10 finish scoreline and wrapped up the semi-finals with a win in race 8 to advance the finals in pole position. These are the favoured conditions for the European champions Nielsen and Olsen from Denmark, who made their comeback almost complete and move up to fourth overall with three top five results. Italy's Conti and Klapcic struggled in the first two races, but got back on track to finish second in races seven and eight and hold on to third overall. The scorelines are close, with just 11 points separating the top three, with the medal races deciding the podium. The 49er men were up on the track immediately after and as the breeze kicked in even harder there were some problems for a few teams such as Wara and Lang from Denmark who finished 14th in race 6. The lighter conditions had aided the lighter weight crews to position themselves at the front of the fleet and advanced to the semi-finals but crunch timers today tested whether they could perform with the breeze up. Disappointment for series leaders Fletcher and Sain, who tumbled from first at the start of the day to fifth overall by the end, with Austria's Bilstein and Husel also dropping from third to 17th. Not quite their plan. But the day belonged to the Kiwis and Australians, with predictable, noteworthy performances in the breeze. Olympic silver medalists Sperling and Tuke claimed the championship lead after three top three finishes. Up from 18th to 7th clamber 2012 Olympic champions and defending world champions Outridge and Jensen from a knockout performance of two wins and a second and third. Their award, the King of the Downwind Accolade and the right to wear the purple jerseys after coming in almost a minute faster than the second place boat in all of the day's downwind legs. 
A Kiwi leaderboard 1-2 as Hansen and Perebski return to the top three behind Berling and Tuke, who proved they had the experience and knowledge to change their game and strike back at the crucial moment. I would like to be leading from the front, uh, you know, from the first day onwards, but like Pete said, we were really happy with how we were going early in the week. Um, our, the points were really close between us and the front guys the whole week, you know, more so than they were in uh, Aarhus and Denmark at the Europeans. So, you know, we sailed really well in the light winds and, uh, you know, really enjoyed it out there today. Lots of breeze and, uh, you know, good to have a good scene. Yeah, it's obviously pretty cool for the, the country to have both of us up there and, yeah, we're not quite sure how... And the girls are leading too, so like, that's, uh, yeah, it's yeah. pretty cool. <laughs> The stage was set for the final day, with three theatre-style races of 10 to 12 minutes and double points scoring to determine the 2013 Seiko 49er and 49er FX world champions. The points were extremely close, with a thrilling finale on the cards. It all came down to the final day at the Seiko 49er and 49er FX world championships. First, it was time for the 49er and 49er FX teams placed 10 to 21 on the leaderboard to compete in a two-race petite final to decide the top boats who had advanced the medal races. The women raced in very light conditions, with the world number 19 pairing from Australia, Price and Elks, jousting against the USA's world number 23 team of Tunnicliffe and Vandermore for the precious 10th place. Tunnicliffe has made the transition to the 49er FX from a 2008 Olympic gold medal in the laser radial and fifth place in the women's match racing at the 2012 Olympics. But the Americans' Olympic prowess did not help, and Australia managed to finish two places ahead and seal the golden ticket. Uh, the race was quite tricky. It was um, quite shifty, volatile conditions. We had a, an all right start and um, we knew what the points were sitting at and because it was just one race, we just went out there and um, yeah, sort of did what we needed to do and um, tried to stay in close with our main competitors. In the men's petite finals, the wind shifted to the opposite direction and it was a battle between Sweden's world number 23 team, Sylvan and Hamill, and the British teams of world number 12s, Pink and Wheeler, and world number 13s, Morrison and Rhodes. Sweden were on the back foot from the start and way back in the first part of the race, with Morrison and Rhodes leading the race at the front of the pack. All was not lost as Pink and Wheeler slowly but surely reeled them in and took the lead in the second upwind leg. They continued their bold progress to take the race win and secure the final 10th place card in the medal races. The medal deciding finals was made up of three short races with lots of boats on boat action and extremely close and tight racing. Every one of the three races counted, with no discard allowed, and each race counting for double points. The first race for the 49er men saw Denmark's Norregard and Thompson take the best start at the pin end of the line, with teammates Wara and Lang opting for the committee boat starting end. Australia's defending world champions and 2012 Olympic gold medalists Outridge and Jensen dug deep to clamber back up the leaderboard in the medal races. In the opening race battle for gold, New Zealand's Hansen and Perebski headed right upwind, with Berling and Tuke sticking close to their rivals Fletcher and Sine. Heading downwind, the British found themselves in trouble and sandwiched between the two Danish teams, whilst Berling and Tuke had accelerated downwind to take the lead by the gate, with Francis Dien and Christidis in second place and taking the opposite right-hand gate. Denmark's Wara and Lang followed the French, but had not found their groove in the race and ultimately finished the race in last place. Berling and Tuke continued to extend their lead and secure the race win with the French in second. Fletcher and Sine found themselves in a tenuous situation, finishing in ninth place and now in real danger of missing out on a podium place.
Race two and the French pair of Dottoli and Del Pesce opted for a middle of the start, with Blair and Tuke taking a great start at the pin end, along with Fletcher and Sine, who needed to make a comeback race and get back in the medals. Outridge and Jensen were not so dominant off the line, and after their sixth place in race one, needed to find something special to claw back. Bart in the lead on the left ley line, and covering the fleet were Hansen and Perevsky, with France just to leeward, and rounding the upwind in first and second. Burling and Took were way back in the fleet, and rounded just behind the Australians, and headed left on the downwind leg. The Kiwis needed to get back up the pack and chose to go to the right-hand side of the track upwind, but it was an impossible ask and they finished in ninth, but still holding on to the overall lead with teammates Hansen and Perebski, who won the race, closing the gap to just 10 points. The third and final race gave Wara and Lang a start at the pin end and the two Kiwi boats in the middle of the line. This was said to be the race of their lives for Hansen and Perebski, who only needed to get four boats between them and Berling and Tuuk to seal the gold medal. An amazing performance for this young 20-year-old Helm and his 21-year-old crew who finished sixth at last year's Worlds. Having already proven themselves in the junior sailing arena, their futures are looking incredibly bright. Dottoli and Del Pesce were in the lead early on with Hansen and Perebski in pursuit and Berling and Tuuk bearing down from the right-hand side of the track. The French were still leading by the downwind gate, but now Berling and Tuuk had moved into second overall with Hansen and Perebski in third, an order which held to the finish. An outstanding Kiwi gold and silver with Francis Dien and Christidis taking bronze. For Berling and Tuuk, who have come up through the youth classes together, it is their first world championship since winning junior sailing. A stunning victory for the Kiwi teams who give inspiration to New Zealand sailors after their America's Cup defeat. Yeah, I mean, all of us here were completely gathered for the boys, you know, or the whole team at you know, Emirates Team New Zealand. Uh, and they all sort of realised that the boys gave it their best shot and, you know, didn't quite make it, but. That's the way racing goes, and for us that was cool. You know, they, you know what Team New Zealand did—they sort of put sailing back on the map, which is good for us. And uh, you know, we've just been going pretty good. You know, Pete and I have been going pretty good this week, and it was good to come with one today. The Kiwis, Maloney and Meach, looked to be confident for gold going into the medal races for the 49er FX women, but nothing was assured with gold, silver, and bronze medals wide open. First race for the women and Italy's Conti and Klapchic started on leeward with Denmark's Hansen and Iverson on windward. But the pole position off the line went to the world number one Kiwis and world champions in waiting, Maloney and Meech. Francis Steyert and Bossard needed to protect their position and kept close to the Italians during the first upwind leg. Maloney and Meach rounded the first mark in the lead with Great Britain's Peters and Groves in second place. But the British managed to move through to take the lead by the second upwind leg with the Kiwis chasing. At this point the French and Italians found themselves further back in the fleet with podium finishes threatened. Brazil's Grail and Kunz, the 49er FX European silver medalists, were now up into fourth overall. Race win to the British, second to the Kiwis and third to the Australians, Price and Elks. On to race two and again Hanson and Everson pushed through with a great start, with the Italians in the middle of the line. The British and Denmark's Nielsen and Olsen headed off the line on Port Tack and over to the right-hand side of the course, with the Danes still in with a slim chance of a medal if they could take top finishes. At the first mark, the Italians were leading with just a small advantage over Nielsen and Olsen. Good work as their right-hand upwind track had paid off. Downwind and the Danish took the lead by the gate with Germany's Jusuk and Lorenz accelerating into second place and the Italians in third and choosing to round the opposite gate. 
France had to take a penalty soon after rounding the gate and dropped to the back of the fleet. But Germany's Jusuk and Lorenz remained calm under pressure and took the race win, with the Danish in second and Brazil in third. With the final medal race remaining, five teams were almost tied in points and any of them could win silver and bronze. Brazil, Netherlands, Italy, France and Germany would have to fight hard. A calculated final race start by the Brazilians at the windward end of the line with their main rivals to leeward. The fleet headed to the right side of the track with the Dutch leading around the gate followed by the French and Germany's Jusok and Lorenz with Brazil in fourth. Heading downwind, Brazil jibed early keeping to the right of the track and to windward of the French and Germans and sell their own track to finish in second, exactly what was needed to claim silver with the French taking bronze. Maloney and Meech secured their place in history to become the first ever 49er FX world champions. It feels good, yeah. I think there was a lot of girls that were like in the hunt the whole time. So it feels good to just be finished and stay on top for the last day. Total domination from the New Zealand teams who won three out of six medals. Massive celebrations at the medal ceremony with enthusiastic spraying of champagne from the Kiwis in particular over each other, their teammates and fellow sailors. The awards and prizes were presented by Seiko in a sea of celebrating and smiling faces. A fantastic championship with the format rewarding consistency, pushing teams to race hard at every stage of the championship and the weather delivering a range of conditions to test all skills. That wraps up the 2013 Seiko 49er and 49er FX World Championships in Marseille, France. New Zealand dominated with a brilliant display of supremacy and maturity from its young teams to delight New Zealand's sailing fans. Thank you for watching.